So um, the first question I have, um, I hope it's going to put you a little bit under pressure and you can get you <coughs> arguing, is um, compatibility. Um, during the kernel summit, one of the, the often heard mantras, especially from Linus, was uh, that user space compatibility is absolutely key and is of utmost important, importance to, to uh, um, hacking in the kernel and, um, and getting the interfaces right. Now my question to that is, um, is that maybe hypocritical? Because uh, if you look at it in detail, you'll find that, that the kernel in recent times has actually broken the user space APIs often and often and often. In some cases, or many cases actually, it got reverted, but in many cases it didn't. Um, for that, for example, one example is the version number, which is the most recent um, thing, where, where the, the major minor, the micro version was uh, reduced to major minor. And uh, this was, I mean, it's very, 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 soft change, I mean, so there's no technical reason for it. Um, and it was made and it broke user space stuff, but it was, you, you went through with it. And there are a couple of cases like that um, where we know that, that uh, kernel changes uh, change user space. So my question first is, is it a little bit, little bit hypocritical? Because it's a mantra, but it's actually a follow. Then the next one is, isn't it a bit naive that a system that has existed as long as Linux existed, um, that we actually want that, um, the, the, the total compatibility, and isn't it, and that is the most explosive one I hope, a little bit self-serving because, yes. because it's you guys who run the really old user space with really new um, kernel space. Isn't it that maybe you just want to be able to run your old stuff, the user space stuff, where you don't care about with the new kernel stuff? Or is it actually really something that people care about and that should be? It's actually all of that, and uh, I, I think the kernel version change is actually a great example of exactly what's going on. Uh, so my mantra has been, and it's been pretty much from the very beginning, that breaking the user experience is an absolute no-no. And uh, that kind of, the ABI stability issue follows from that, it's not a primary thing. The biggest thing any program can do is not the technical details of the program itself, it's how useful the program is to users. So anytime a program like the kernel or any other project breaks the user experience, uh, to me, that is the absolute worst failure that a software project can make. It's, uh, it's uh, the complete no-no to ever break user space or in, for other projects to ever break features that your users depend on because no project is more important than the users of the project. Uh, so when you have something like a version change that actually breaks badly written software, uh, a lot of projects will just go and say, hey, that is really bad crap software. And it's true. There's no question that when we change the version and that actually broke applications, the applications that cared so much about the kernel version that they just said, hey, I won't run because I don't understand what version you are, they're badly written. Uh, but what we actually did, we did not revert the change. But exactly because I think it's so important to be compatible, we now have a flag where you can say, okay, I know this program is broken. We set this compatibility flag, uh, the two point, uh, Linux 2.4 uh, combat flag, and to that pro program, we will now report that we are running 2.4.40 instead of 3.0 or 3.1. And that's the kind of example where you have to do completely ridiculous thing. I mean, this is, this is an idiotic patch. There's no question that it was stupid of us to just add extra code to lie about our version. But I actually feel so strongly about compatibility that we did that. So yes, we, what happens is we actually break programs. Sometimes we break programs by mistake because people just don't think about the implications of the change they do. They know they're making an improvement, but they don't think about the fact that sometimes people really rely on the old behavior. Uh, and uh, then people notice it, and we have to revert it. 
the bad situation is actually when people notice it's too late and another program has started relying on the new behavior. And then we can't revert it anymore because now by reverting it, we break something else instead. And you really can't win. So what ends up happening is uh, we do break user space occasionally. We try very, very hard not to do it. Uh, it's unavoidable that it happens occasionally. Uh, but it's, it's basically uh, when it happens, everybody feels really, really bad about it. And I, in particular, feel really, really bad about it. I'm very eager to report changes that, that break user experience. Yeah, and you make us feel bad about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not at all shy about it, telling people that, hey, you fucked up. You. So, so I will let people know that, that you either have to fix this, or I will revert. And, uh, and, uh, and yes, I, there's a saying, on the internet, nobody can hear you being subtle. <laughs> so I'm not subtle about it, and I'm annoyed with subtle. Right, there's, there's a couple of other things to say there. One thing, uh, PayPal is working on some include file improvements to make it actually easier to find ABI changes if you make a mistake. The other thing about the importance of this, if you want to understand the importance of not suddenly changing your user's experience, I would go and take a look at GNOME 3.0. Irrespective of whether it's a good user interface design or not, it's a demonstration of why you don't suddenly change everything on people who rely on what you were doing. Sorry, it's never happened. Yeah, that's the whole point why we are running code districts, because you can use them for work and are not forced by that by the new fancy user space uh, thing to just spend tons of time for finding the stuff you want to work with. But isn't that a philosophy that in today's world, where the computer industry moves as fast as it does, is a little bit backwards? I mean, isn't change no, it's a component backwards. of what of uh, um, the, the, the um, development of technology? You are asking the wrong question. Um, hey, it's my question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving the wrong answer. No, no, that's my um, If you look at it from the point of view of the people producing the hardware and the technology, then there is always a pressure from them to get every new feature and every new thing enabled. But if you talk to the users of these systems, most of them are primarily concerned that what used to work continues to work and in the same way. But you won't have to look at enterprise Linux, right? You look at the enterprise Linux people, and you go to them and say, we've got this really cool new feature. And then what the first thing they ask is, has it been running somewhere else reliably for three years? That's the mentality of most of a lot of the user base. A lot of the user base, but are you really sure that, that a computer that still behaves exactly the same way and you interface with it exactly the same way as you did 20 years ago, that means without a mouse, just with a keyboard? No, you, you don't really this thing that this is how our computer is today. Should that's actually work. not what we do. Uh, what we do is we make sure that all ways of working do work. That doesn't mean that we disallow new ways of working. So one of the things that I used to test, and I have to admit that for the last 10 years or so, I haven't actually tested. But I used to have these really old binaries that, I mean, I'm sure they exist somewhere still, but where some of the first binaries ever created for Linux, like the original shell binary uh, that was a bad format, ADA out, it used these system calls that we deprecated for years and years. I think we started deprecating them within like a few months of them being released. Um, and I actually ran them in every once in a while to check that they still worked. And I haven't done that for a long time, but, but, but it doesn't mean that I actually ran them for work. It meant that I ran them to make sure that people who wanted to use them and didn't care about anything else could use them. I moved on. And I think everybody else should move on and not use the old binaries. But you can do both support old can we, because I mean I can, can can name you a couple of examples where we broke AEI and we didn't care. So for example, I don't know, it's probably going to be a bit technical, but but uh, Sysfs got broken many, many times. Yes. The NSS the NSC group um, handler uh, controller was just removed from the kernel. I, 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 I mean we we, it, we had broken stuff and usually your comment that it gets pretty esoteric is really, really true. 
Well, I mean, it broke it broke system D or something like that. My own project. That's why I noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, it's not that it's a question of time. Did the users know this? Did the users care? Um, some yeah. people, some did. For example, myself. As mentioned, we make mistakes sometimes. We try to fix them very actively, and we don't lie about it. But my list has like ten items here, goes on and on and on. So, so, so my approach to this problem has been to work on something that's so far away from user level, I can't even see that this is all my <laughs> But with these guys talking, I'm starting to get worried. I, I just have trace events queued up for three two, and I wonder if I'm signing myself up not to be able to ever modify RCU in the future. You might. Yeah, we're quickly. Yeah, we also have killed some of the things of brokers and compatibility because of that. There have been times, for example, where there were values in the profit test which simply became too expensive to compute on the modern machine. There are also sometimes security issues where uh, there, we have made the wrong decision and uh, it was something useful and people actually used it. And we realized that the interface was so badly designed that it fundamentally gave people privileges that they cannot have because if they're bad people, they can use them for bad things. So sometimes we've had to break things on purpose, and it's, it's actually very painful to me. Uh, and, uh, and we really try to avoid it. I try to figure out how can we make this interface work in a way where it's still safe and it still appears to work, but it doesn't give you quite as much information or quite as much access as, as it used to. So that normal users who are not actually doing anything bad will still see it working, but the bad users who try to exploit it will not see it working well enough that they can actually exploit it. So we, we, we sometimes even have a situation where we try to break things consciously in a way that a normal user won't even that it's broke. We have an audience question about that, I think. Um, I'd just like to know what the best way to get stopped if I see on Windows that they have some kernel code to fix SimCity in, in the kernel. I think uh, that's really a bad example of not how to do it. And so there's the question, how far do you go? And how far do you... Uh, increase kernel complexity, which is, I think, pretty complex, and then um, put much stuff into it, which is much better fixed on the right side. And that's, uh, I think, that's, that's the other side of this. Yes, so uh, I think Alan probably has a few comments about that too, but I would like to point out that uh, one thing open source does is it actually makes things much, much easier to fix. Uh, so we do actually rewrite whole subsystems and, uh, and do things completely differently. And then we try to write, and we can change all the internal organizations. And then quite often we have this legacy layer on top that uses new information but just exposes it in the old way. It, it usually isn't that a problem. We have very seldom had uh, kernel complexity issues due to that problem. We have kernel complexity issues due to other problems, notably that we're doing very complicated things and we're trying to do complex things in scalable and efficient ways and the algorithms we use are often very <coughs> non-obvious. End up having people who have to specialize in certain areas just because if you're an outsider you can't understand the curve at all. Um, so I'm not saying our current is simple, but I think the complexity comes from other pressures. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. But there are the complexity of supporting some of the hardware, the pathologies, dealing with the user space stuff is minor. The other thing which happens that helps both in hardware and software terms is that you can market interfaces deprecating, discourage people from using it, give them better interfaces. And over time, they will move to the new interfaces. And eventually, you can get rid of the old one and nobody notices. And we've done that more than once. And if we, because again, it's open source, we get it wrong. We remove it and the screen, we just put it back again. Okay, um, let's change topics a little bit.